Welcome back to Talk to Doc. I'm Marisa Laksa Pangilinan with Dr. JJ Chongson. Joining us is Dr. Catherine Yap Asidirio. She's an aesthetic and reconstructive breast surgeon at the Medical City. Hello, Doc Yen. Hello, thank you for inviting me today. Well, first, Doc, I think we have to clarify that uh, breast reconstruction is not merely a cosmetic procedure, right? So what is involved in this kind of uh, what, procedure? Okay. Yeah, well, it's really a reconstructive procedure. Um, it's been around in the industrialized nations for about 20 years now. Mm -hmm. um, it's been picking up in our country lately, I guess the last 5 to 10 years. No? Well, understandably, it's because their rates, are, their breast cancer rates are higher than ours. Mm. Still, the Philippines actually has one of the highest rates um, of breast cancer in has the highest rates of breast cancer in Southeast Asia. Basically, breast reconstruction involves making a new breast mound that should be symmetrical and aesthetically appealing. It should be symmetrical to the other breast. Is it normally done to breast cancer patients only? Um, you can also do it for, it's most commonly, perhaps about 90, 95% of the time. No? Um, you have to understand we have hundreds of women undergoing a mastectomy in this country or the removal of a breast mm -hmm. every day. But we can also do it for some rare cases wherein there are congenital anomalies. The breast of the woman does not form or does not grow. Mm -hmm. We can also reconstruct a breast after it has been injured by trauma. Zeroing in on breast cancer, mm -hmm. when can it be done? Dr. Yen. Um, the best time to do it actually is immediately after the mastectomy. No? Mm -hmm. And what has made this possible is the advent of skin sparing mastectomy. You have to understand that um, the treatment of breast cancer has really changed, no? has rapidly changed the last 10 years. We now have what we call the skin sparing mastectomy. The breast is composed of um, three things. So it's the skin outside the breast, and then you have fat, and then you have the milk producing glands. No? Mm -hmm. um, it's these milk producing glands that most commonly becomes breast cancer. Mm -hmm. oh. So the skin and the fat are not strictly involved. And through the years, they found that even if they leave the skin behind, it doesn't change the survival rate. Mm -hmm. So before, the surgeries were very, very aggressive. Oh, they just take off the breast completely. Yeah, were very, very yeah. aggressive. Now we're into targeted breast cancer therapy. No? And I think I'm very proud to say that in Medical City, we have a multidisciplinary team, which means not just one doctor handle you, when you have breast cancer, you have your breast surgeon, the surgical oncologist, and then you have the plastic surgeon to reconstruct. You have a medical oncologist, a radiation oncologist, a radiologist that specializes just in looking at mammograms and ultrasounds. Really, a lot of people handle you. And because of that, our success rates have been better because mm. of that, because they have all these specialists working together. You have to understand, um, I think they, they realize that the last five to 10 years now, because of all the billions of research that have been poured into breast cancer, they realize that each cancer is different, just like people. Mm -hmm. Each cancer has its own fingerprint. Correct. So, so you it know, it's targeted, yeah, individualized, targeted treatment. You said that uh, the best time to yeah. have your reconstruction is after the mastectomy. Yeah. So we, How about we those patients who had their mastectomy years before. or decades yeah, ago? Okay. We'll, we'll, go into the, sorry, we'll go into the immediately after mm -hmm. the mastectomy. No? So because of a skin sparing mastectomy, you have, they leave the skin behind yes. because it's not part of the cancer surgery anymore. And then we use several methods to fill that up yes, and make a new breast. Yes, the options or the methods. Yeah, to there, make a new breast right away. What are right the available away. options we have? Yeah. For, for other patients who have had a mastectomy years ago, so normally they have a flat chest on one side mm -hmm. and they have a scar. Um, we can put in what we call a tissue expander. It's quite neat. It's a, um, it's a silicone, shell that's empty and then it has a tube and then it has a little port where you inject it with sterile water every two weeks to expand it mm -hmm. until you reach the size and the shape um, similar to the other breast and after that you may replace it with a silicone implant. Mm -hmm. So we, we have so many options mm -hmm. for each Yung silicone patient. implant, diba, it's also believed to be cancerous. Totoo ba yun? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm so glad. it's. 2010 uh -huh. and Maricel I can answer you <laughs> um, 100 percent no all the yeah 30 years worth of literature mm. has proven that it does not 
cause okay, breast good. cancer. Kasi iba na tatakot if they go under the sun daw, baka it will melt or yeah. you know, yeah. you know, I things know. like this that. Is a, this is a good way really to, um, to talk about all these myths. There's mm. still so many myths involving breast cancer and breast surgery, breast implants. Yeah. So that's when you put the implant. What's the other mm -hmm. option naman? Another option really is to use a woman's own excess tissues. Mm -hmm. So the most common excess tissue we use no, is the, this piece of skin and fat mm -hmm. down here in our belly. Yeah, I think we, ca we, yeah, we call it the <laughs> puson. Okay. It's the same piece of skin and fat that we throw out in a tummy tuck. Uh -huh. We use it to make a new breast. Diba? So you have this your one, tummy tuck na and while having breast. your breast, breast reconstruction. This one, Marisel, for me, this is my favorite procedure. Mm. I think to this day, it's really one of the most elegant procedures in plastic surgery. So we use that piece of skin and fat and we make it into a new breast. Mm -hmm. The advantages of this is that it's your own tissue. No? Mm. Um, it will actually grow with you. So if you get a little bigger, your other breast will also get a little bigger and your new reconstructed breast will, will follow. I mean, the same way if you, you, know, if you lose weight. Mm -hmm. So it's very natural, it gets better with time. Uh, another option really is to use um, this, this piece of fat and muscle from our back. Mm. You know that muscle there? That, there's uh, that, some that excess fat for other when, people. When you put on your bra, there's always <laughs> a little bit there. We also use that to make a new breast. Mm -hmm. Ken, what if a patient is undergoing chemotherapy or radiation, mm -hmm. for example? Will these things interfere Affect. with yeah? With Actually, if we do it right away, uh, immediately after the mastectomy, so all wounds heal in a specified amount of time. Normally, two to three weeks, everything is healed. Um, even if you have more wounds, because with the with that that operation wherein you get from the tummy, you have an extra scar at the bottom. No? Normally, they will heal in the same amount of time, and you should be able to start your chemotherapy on time. Mm -hmm. At the same time, they always recommend that's about one month after the cancer surgery, and you should also be able to do radiation therapy. Um, however, if um, you're, for example, you've undergone the mastectomy and you're undergoing, you will undergo chemo and radiotherapy, radiation. normally I wait. Mm -hmm. If um, to let them finish everything, and then we can talk about the reconstruction. So that's delayed, delayed reconstruction. Yeah. That can also be done. What so about you? Oh, sorry. Yes, Mary. Go ahead. Your nipple reconstruction. Ayon, that's another really, <laughs> Is really it part of the whole yeah, procedure. Yeah, it's a, a really neat procedure. Um, we do it f a few months down the line. We, so first we make the breast mound, no, and then it takes time for it to settle into position. It's a little bit swollen at first, and then finally it achieves the the nice shape no, of a woman's breast. About three months at the earliest, we can think of doing the nipple and areola recon. The location is very important because um, they say even if you make a very nice nipple and areola, if it's in the wrong place, oh, no. that really ruins everything, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so they should be symmetric. Yes, they have to be in the right place. And I, I always involve um, my patients in really determining where. So we spend quite a bit of time in the clinic and then we stand in front of the mirror and we both decide where to put it. Um, so it's transforming a flat structure. It's just the skin itself of the breast mound. We make a local flap, we erase little pieces of skin and then we fold it onto itself and then you transform it into a three-dimensional nipple. I'm sure a lot of women are so excited with this kind of uh, new technology, diba? Right? But I'm sure concerned in sila dun sa cost. Yeah, I think I've always believed. No, this is a personal crusade mm -hmm. for me. So I think that uh, your finances. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you can find you can find ways. You know, if you really want to have a new breast. But I think most plastic surgeons in this country, since mm -hmm. this is a reconstructive and not really a cosmetic procedure, I think we believe that we can work around a patient's finances mm -hmm. because. You know, everybody deserves to have two breasts, yes, right? Yes. I mean, this is not a this is not a cosmetic procedure. And recently, um, our association, the Association of um, Plastic Surgeons in the Philippines, we've really worked with PhilHealth. Mm. So they added this to their list of compensable oh, procedures. That's good. They started in 2007. Mm. 
they added it in addition to the procedures that they already cover. So this is fully covered by PhilHealth. Well, that's great yeah. news so to women who think that yeah. they will have to pour in all their hard and earned money into reconstruction yeah. in the Badal. So we're working towards Sorry. this. In fact, in the in the industrialized nations su such as the U.S., well, their breast cancer rates are admittedly higher than ours, no? But it's a federal law there for their insurance companies to cover for breast reconstruction. So I hope I hope we get there. Yeah. So I hope we get there. Anyway, we'll have to take a break right now. Dr. Asidilio will be answering your questions and the questions of our televiewers. Talk to Doc will be right back.